Hi, Roger here to help you get started quickly with Symphony I.O. Mark II's monitor workflows. In this video, I'll show you how to set up Dolby Atmos using Logic Pro, Symphony I.O., and a 714 speaker array. We'll add this to the stereo speakers we set up in the first video in this series. If you haven't seen that video where I cover the basics of monitor workflow functionality, you may want to check it out here. In the first step, we'll make the connection between your Symphony I.O and your 714 speaker array. For the purposes of this video, we'll assume that bass management, if it's needed, is handled by the speaker system itself. So in your typical studio that accommodates both Atmos and stereo monitoring, the left and right speakers of stereo set one and the left and right of the 714 array are usually the same set of speakers, while stereo speaker sets two and three use smaller speakers that aren't part of the 714 array. So if we count the 714 array plus two additional stereo sets, that gives us a total of 16 speakers to connect. So let's get started there. In Symphony Control, click the Analog Output Setup button. We've already set up the first six outputs for stereo speakers, and we'll need the remaining outputs for our 714 array. So set Analog Outputs 78 through 1516 to speaker now. Next, click the Monitor Workflows button. Click the third slot, import the three stereo workflow we previously saved, then name this new workflow 7.1.4. We've got a lot more speakers to deal with, so here's where it's helpful to customize the analog output names in Symphony Control. It seems like everyone's got their own standard for output order and naming. So here's the order we use that seems to work across different Atmos compatible software. Once you've named the outputs, connect the actual speakers to the corresponding analog outputs. In the I.O. view, set source for outputs 78 through 1516 to playback 34 through 1112. Set all the speakers that are part of the 714 array to speaker set one, and make sure that stereo speaker sets two and three are set to off. When we're playing an Atmos mix, we want to make sure that no signals get inadvertently routed to our smaller stereo speakers. Now, if we look at our stereo workflows, we'll see that the speaker outputs that used only for Atmos are automatically set to off, again, to make sure no signals get inadvertently routed. So now we've got three monitor workflows, two for stereo playback and one for Atmos playback. So how can we switch between them quickly? We can switch between these monitor workflows from Symphony Control software, from the front panel touchscreen, or from the Apogee hardware remote. So with Symphony I.O. now connected to our speakers, let's set up Logic Pro 10.7. Now, I think the best way to get started with Atmos mixing is to start with a stereo mix that you're happy with. In order to avoid inadvertent changes to your stereo mix, open the Stereo Logic project and make a copy of it by choosing File, Save a Copy As. Now open the Copied project and choose Mix Dolby Atmos. Set Spatial Audio to Dolby Atmos and set Surround Format to 7.1.2. Now to match the order of Logic Pro's 7.1.4 outputs with the order we just set up in Symphony Control, choose Logic Pro Preferences Audio and click on the I.O. Assignments tab. In the Surround section of the window, set Show As to 7.1.4, then set up outputs as shown here. Finally, in the Logic Pro Mixer, open the Atmos plugin on the master track and set Monitoring Format to 7.1.4. Now you're ready to dive into all the details of Logic Pro. Bed tracks versus objects, master plugins before or after the Atmos plugin, using the multi-channel versions of Space Designer and the other plugins, your creative journey is really just getting started. Next up in the final video of this series, we'll answer one of the most frequently asked questions we receive about setting up an Atmos room. How do I calibrate my playback system? 